Canelo versus Charlo, mega matchup or another mega beatdown? Hello, fight fans. This is Coach Nathan of NS Champ 7 Park Boxing Series at NSChamp7.com, and that's the title of my analysis of the upcoming super middleweight title match that will be televised live on Showtime pay per view on September 30th. And that's Saul Canelo Alvarez, who's 59 wins, two defeats, two draws, with 39 by way of knockout defending his unified titles against the unified junior middleweight champion, Jermel Ironman Charlo, who has 35 wins, one defeat, one draw, with 19 knockouts. First off, a lot has been said and discussed about the size advantage of Alvarez. But consider this. Charlo has about a three-inch height and reach advantage, an excellent jab, which he'll def definitely need here, and the two blemishes on his record, the defeat to Tony Harrison and the draw with Brian Castaño, in the rematch, he scored vicious knockouts to both. And if you study his offense, you'll notice he punches hard, throws hard punches at different angles, and he also uses different angles on defense as well. He's going to be a tough, a much harder puzzle to solve than Caleb Plant, who lasted 11 rounds, wasn't a hard puncher, and mainly used his legs for defense, or Billy Joe Saunders, who lasted eight rounds and also had a similar uh, boxing type of a style, but not quite as fast and athletic as Plant. I believe Charlo can be reminiscent of the tough Cuban champion, Ares Landy Lara, who was a difficult matchup for Alvarez because he kept the puncher constantly turning, giving angles on offense, and on defense, and he had good hand speed, similar to Mayweather, who beat Canelo. Not allowing Canelo to get set to throw the hard bombs, which is at the heart of his attack. I also believe that Jermel's walking around weight is somewhere up in the 160s, so obviously there would be no problem making weight, but it's not like he's moving up to such a huge uh, weight class to have a weight advantage. Nowadays, it's common for a lot of fighters to dry out making weight, as the case with Devin Haney and Teofimo Lopez, until they just can't do it anymore. Then there's the intangibles. No one can truly measure another man's heart and determination. Boxing history shows us with the examples of guys like Sugar Ray Robinson, Sugar Ray Leonard, Manny Pacquiao, Bernard the Executioner Hopkins, and Michael Spinks, just to name a few. Guys who not only had the skill, but the will to move up and had great success. Now, I mentioned those guys also because moving up in weight is nothing new in professional prize fighting. Some people have said about this fight is stupid for Jamel to move up to weight classes. Others said it's a definite mismatch. And they've used examples such as uh, Kel Brook when he challenged Triple G and got knocked out, and Mikey Garcia when he lost to Earl Spence. But to others, it's called daring to be great. And it also provides more intrigue for us, the fans, as we, as we witness the match. Now, having said all of that, Canelo Alvarez is a future Hall of Famer who also moved up in weight with great success. He's a hard punching counter puncher with an excellent chin who knows how to cut off the ring and land wrecking ball body shots to set up the knockout. And I've yet to see Charlo's chin get tested against this level of a puncher. But nevertheless, I believe this will be an exciting, explosive match for however long it lasts. And if Charlo's chin can pass the test, this could be a strong candidate for fight of the year. So, that's my take on this one, folks. But don't forget, for elite boxing instruction, elite boxing analysis, and elite boxing philosophy, click the like button and the notification button and subscribe to NSChamp7 Park Boxing Series at NSChamp7.com.